Hello and a warm welcome in this video. PHP is the fifth most searched programming language in Google. And yes, you can see from the Facebook to the Tumblr to the Wikipedia, there is no shortage of websites on an internet that are using PHP in somehow the other. As a result, PHP jobs are significantly increasing day by day. So guys, if you are seeking or preparing for PHP jobs, then this is the right video for you because here in this video we are going to cover the most asked 20 PHP interview questions with answers. I am not just going to answer these questions but also guide you to understand how to present these technical questions. No matter you are an experienced or a fresher guy, you like it or not like it, but in an interview, 70% of your technical skills are needed and 30% your answers presentation. The more the better presentation of your answers, the more the better impact you can create on an interviewer's mind. So, in this one hour of video, we are going to cover this following questions. As you can see on the screen, that is, what is PHP? How the variable is declared in PHP? How to write the JavaScript in PHP? What is the difference between JavaScript and PHP? What is the purpose of add thread in PHP? How does the for loop, I mean for each loop works in PHP? What is the use of session start and session destroy functions in PHP? What are the magic constants in PHP? And many other questions. Yes, we are going to answer in this video. So guys, before I start answering the first question, that is, what is PHP? I want to make an announcement, that is, yes. I want to gift you my PHP interview question and answers ebook for free. Yes, you heard right, for free. Now, to get this ebook, what do you need to do? You have to share this YouTube video anywhere on your social accounts like LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter and do send us a mail with your shared URL on questpond at questpond.com and get this ebook for free and also do visit our website that is www.questpond.com where we have lots of step by step and interview preparation videos on C sharp, .NET, Angular, Azure, Python, Power BI, SQL Server and many more. So, with that, let's start answering our question number one, that is, what is PHP? What is PHP? A very important interview question. This question might be looking like a very basic question, but believe me, this question has been asked many times during an interviews. So now, let's understand how to answer this question. PHP initially stood for the personal homepage. But now it is called as hypertext preprocessor. So let me just write it over here. So yes. The first version of PHP was launched 26 years ago and now we have like 8.1.1 stable version which you can easily download it from php.net website. PHP is a scripting language. Yes. Now what is scripting language? A language which is interpreted during the runtime. So let me just write it over here. Yes. This is not a language which get interpreted during the compile time. It get interpreted during the runtime only. So hence PHP is a scripting language and this scripting language is designed to develop the dynamic and interactive websites. Yes guys, so this PHP scripting language is been designed to develop the websites and 80% of the websites on an internet runs on PHP. This is true. Yes. And now, let's talk about the file extension. So whenever you save the PHP file, you, you will find .php extension at the end of the file. So whenever you will find a file with the .php, then that file is called as PHP file. And inside this file, you can write a PHP tags. 
yes so something like this so inside this tags you can write a php tags like uh, include like a string replace like functions like classes like object and many other php tags yes you can mention in this php file guys it is among the first server side scripting language that could be embed into the html tags yes so whenever you have like a html tag or a html file yes you can embed a php tag inside a html file but the extension of that file will be dot php only but this is the beauty of this php scripting language that yes you can add the functionality to the web pages without needing to call the external files for the data so guys these are the some of the points which you can mention while describing this question i hope you understand it now guys let's move on to the next question advantages of using php again a very important interview question this is again might be looking like a very basic interview question but believe me many developers fails to answer this question or many developers fails to present this question properly so now in this answer let's understand how to present this answer so whenever you get this type of questions like advantages php what is php tell us the difference between something something then always tell your answer into the points so now let's understand the advantages of using php so the first advantage is that it is a open source scripting language and free from the cost and can be downloaded anytime anywhere on any system so our first advantage is that it is open source yes so the second advantage is that because of its cost free any small scale or low budget companies or individuals can develop dynamic and interactive website using php and mysql so definitely due to its low cost a small scale companies can benefit yes and the third advantage it is a platform independent means it can work on any operating system like ubuntu linux windows mac etc so it is platform independent can work on definitely windows ubuntu mac right platform independent okay now fourth advantage it can be connect to popular rdbms databases like mysql so let me just write it down here so mysql we have like a mother of all databases that is ms sql we have sql lite right so this php can able to connect to any databases any rdbms databases and that is the biggest advantage of using the php so let me write one more database here as mongodb okay so now let's talk about the fifth advantage php is easy and simple to learn this is again one more advantage because any programmer who wants to start their career as a programming then yes php is a way to go so let me write one more advantage is that it is easy and simple to learn yes now let's talk about the sixth advantage using php we can develop the robust and dynamic websites and compared to other programming language php allows the website developers to have more control so how more control for example we can embed the php tags inside the javascript or html code so again one more advantage of using php that we can embed so php with javascript and html very easily yes 
Now let's talk about the seventh advantage. On an internet, 80% of the websites runs on PHP. That is the biggest advantage of using PHP. 80% guys, it's a big number. PHP has a very helpful, active and widespread PHP community. Also, the scripting language offers lots of resources such as commands, functions, codes, which can easily be rewritten and used without any cost and thus makes it PHP more popular. So let me write over here. PHP has got lots of resources and large community base, right? Yes, guys, there are many more advantages in PHP. Like in case if you want our web application to be structured as per MVC pattern, then yes, we can use the Laravel framework or other framework in PHP. In case if you want to develop an e-commerce website, then yes, we have lots of options in PHP. Like we can use WooCommerce, we can use OpenCart, we can use Magento. And in case if you want to develop any CMS content management system websites in PHP, then yes, we can take the support of WordPress, Joomla, etc. So these are some of the advantages of using PHP. I hope you like this question. So this is how you have to present your answers guys. So eighth point, I have not mentioned it over here, but yes, you can elaborate the eighth point in your answer. So now. Let's move on to the next question. What are the popular frameworks available in PHP? Guys, again, a very important interview questions. So now let's understand how to answer this question. There are several reasons of using the PHP framework compared to coding from the scratch. So what are the reasons? So reasons can be your faster development can happen using framework. You can write less code, can get a better performance, use of libraries and resources, follows the best practices of coding and can make a web application more secure. Now guys, let's talk about the popular PHP frameworks available in the market. So we have like Laravel, the number one, a popular framework, right? So Laravel uses a design pattern called model view controller approach. It is primarily used for building the custom web applications using the PHP. So we have a Laravel framework, which uses the MVC framework approach that is model view controller approach. Okay. On the second, we have symphony symphony again, a open source PHP framework. So let me just write here symphony. Again, it's an open source PHP framework used for developing the web applications. And here we have a set of reusable PHP components, which we can use and we can implement in our project very easily. So again, this is one more popular PHP framework. On the third, we have my favorite PHP framework, which I really love to use in my projects. That is Codeigniter. This is a lightweight and straightforward PHP framework, considerably faster compared to the other frameworks. So we have some key features in this framework also like MVC architecture, easy to learn, top notch error handling mechanism. That's my favorite inbuilt security and simple and excellent documentation. And thus it makes this framework, my favorite on fourth, we have cake PHP. Yes. Cake PHP has inbuilt ORM system. It provides a powerful and flexible way to work with the relational databases. Again, cake PHP is an open source. Yes. So on fifth, we have Yi. Yi is an open source object oriented component based MVC PHP framework. He is a good choice for the newcomers to the PHP. Here they can easily learn more about working with the databases or MVC pattern. So guys, these are the top five trending frameworks. We also have some more best PHP frameworks like uh, Zen fuel PHP. So here, let me write fuel PHP. 
we have slim we have palcon etc so these are the popular php frameworks available in php so guys now let's move on to the next question what are the popular content management system available in php so cms is a software guys that help us to user to create manage modify the content on the website without the need of specialized technical developer yes so on the number 1 we have wordpress very popular yes the number 1 in the content management system my all time favorite wordpress which is simple and easy to learn and has got n number of themes and resources so on the second we have joomla again it's a cms based and very similar like wordpress on the third we have drupal drupal again it's a free open source content management system with large supportive community and it is used by the millions of the people organizations around the globe so guys these are the three popular content management system available in the php so guys now let's move on to the next question what is the difference between echo and print guys this question is a very popular and a very important interview question so i request you guys that don't miss this question echo and print both are the statements and both help us to display the output to the browser so in case if you want to display something output to the browser yes you can take the help of either echo either print so they can work with or without parentheses you can see that here right now so the declaring of the syntax of echo and print both are same you can see that right so either it work with parentheses or without parentheses you can see that right so in case let's go to our vs code editor and in case if you want to display something so php i will say echo hi so there you go or i want to say print print me so there you go let me run this code and yes you can see the output over here hi and print me so here i have used without parentheses in case if you want to use with the parentheses yes you can do that so something like this so there you go so there you go you can see that right so it works with or without parentheses both echo can display the output multiple variables value separated by comma yes so let's go to our visual studio and let's check that whether yes echo can display the multiple variables or not so for that let's go here and here you can see that we have two variables here and we have displayed the output over here so let me just run the code so yes you can see that we can able to display the two variable output in a single echo line right so now uh, you can see that print cannot display the output of the multiple variables it can display the output of a single variable value only yes let's check that also for that what i will do let me just copy this whether print can able to print the display output of two variables let's check that let me comment this and here yes you can see that we have some error over here you can see that parse error syntax error unexpected comma right so it is proved that we cannot display the output of multiple variables in a single line okay so now echo is void echo does not have any return type but print has a return type as 1 so let's check that whether the print has a return value as 1 or not so for that let's go to our vs code editor and now what i will do let me just run this code so for that i will just put a break over here so there you go let me run the code and here you can see that we have one 
means this one so hence it is proved that this print value returns one so in case if you want to check with the echo echo is void you can see that so you can see there is an error here unexpected right so hence it is proved that echo is void and print returns a value as one now we have fifth one here you can see that echo is faster than print and print is slower than echo now to check this what i will do you can see that i have created a program here which has a start time where we run the for loop for 2000 times and we print something as echo then we end the time and we check the execution time you can see that right and then similarly we have the same program for print also where we start the time you can see that again we do some for loop here 2000 times and we do the print of the print statement then we end the time and then we check the execution time of print here you can see that a print message here a echo statement over here okay so what i will do let me run this program now so this program will prove us that whether the echo statement is faster than print statement or print is slower than echo statement so let me just run this program so for that let me go to the browser and let me just refresh it and here you can see that print statement has taken 1.65 seconds for execution let's check for echo also so let's scroll up so there you go you can see that it has taken 1.76 so with this execution it shows that echo is slower than print but virtually in the statement in the books we have like echo is faster than print and print is slower than echo so now this is all about the differences between echo and print now let's move on to the next question how variables are declared in php again a very basic but a very important interview question so now let's understand how to answer this question so for this let me open my vs code editor and let's go to this page and yes let me delete this there you go and let's write it now you can see that to declare a variable we have to use a dollar sign here okay so whenever you declare a variable use a dollar sign and variables can have long descriptive names like any name you can give a long keyword also here it's fine a short name also like uh, for example i can write n also i can write m also you know so all this is fine and uh, variables can have uh, alpha numeric characters like uh, sm small a to z uh, big a to z and can have numbers like 0 to 9 and can also have underscores so you can start a variable name with underscore also but you cannot start a variable name with the number so you can see that so there you go you can see that so it is giving some error here okay so yes you can declare the variable name with the underscore or with the alphanumeric characters okay now in order to assign the variables you have to use equal to sign here so here you can see that we have assigned the value as high to this variable okay php is a loosely typed language and here we don't require to declare the data types of variables so if you see that this is not a strong type language like c sharp this is a loosely typed language so here we don't need to declare a data type here here we can directly declare a variable so for example you can see that i have declared a variable here and the data type is automatically selected here you can see that variable string so when i do the hover on this variable you can see that it is showing me that this is of a string data type and if i just change the value over here of this variable like 12 and if i save this and you can see that it is showing me the int so if i make it 2.23 it will show me the float so there you go you can see that if i make it this as true so it should show me a boolean so there you go you can see that right one more point php variables are case sensitive that is 
so if i declare dollar m so if i have a value like this let's say one two and i can have one more variable called dollar m with a capital m since php variables are case sensitive so we can use small m and small large m like this both together so we can have two outputs with the same variable name only the difference is that the case sensitive so there you go i can save it i can run the code so you can see that 12 and 13 yes so php variables are case sensitive so guys this is all about in this question now let's move on to the next question what is the difference between dollar message and dollar dollar message guys again this is a very confusing but a very important interview question you can expect this interview question on your table anytime so be prepared for this question also now how to answer this question dollar message and dollar dollar message both are variables but dollar message is a simple variable so let me just write it over here so there you go so there you go this is again a variable so what i will do here let me just give my name here as guru and again let me write one more variable of dollar dollar message you can see that and here let me give a one more name as Shritik. So there you go. You can see that. So they both are variables, but dollar message is a variable with a fixed name. Yes, you can see that. And dollar dollar message is a variable whose name stored in this variable. Okay. So for example, if the dollar message contains guru then dollar dollar message is same as dollar guru okay so what i will do let me just print the output so let me just show you that so here i will use message and here let me use message so there you go let me just save it let me clear this and let me run it so there you go you can see that the output is guru and shritik so what i will do let me again write it over here so dollar message there you go and if i run it guru and shritik you can see that so if I change this to Guru and if I run it again, let me clear this and let me run the code. You can see the output, right? One is the variable with the fixed value and another one is the reference for that variable. Okay. So this is the difference between dollar message and dollar dollar message. I hope you understand this question. Now let's move on to the next question. how to write the javascript code inside the php code again a very important interview question especially for the freshers guys so if you are a fresher then you should watch this video watch this question and learn how to answer this question so now as you can see that we are into our php file where we have a html form over here with the button submit you can see that and the name of that button is btn post so what we want here so whenever a user clicks on that button and whenever that form is submitted posted so we want that a javascript code to be highlighted over there means there we want a alert box to be popped up saying that form has been submitted successfully so for that i have a code with me so there you go you can see that i have a javascript code which I have written inside the PHP code. You can see that. So echo, then the JavaScript code. So guys, this is how you have to write the JavaScript code inside the PHP code. Okay. So here the if condition of the PHP code saying that if the button is posted, 
okay then alert the javascript code saying that form has been submitted successfully so what i will do let me just save this and let's go to our browser so let me just show you the demo submit so there you go you can see that form has been submitted successfully i will say okay so guys this is how you have to write the javascript code inside the php so this is how you have to answer this question i hope you understand it now guys let's move on to the next question how to show the javascript alert with a php variable now as you can see that we have already written a javascript code inside the php code you can see that so in our previous question we covered this part so where we have a form and then we have a javascript code which we have written inside the php code now what we want we want that javascript alert message to be displayed with the php variable now this message you know that is the form has been submitted successfully so this message should come from the php variable so now how to do that so for that just we need to create a variable here that is alert message is equal to form submitted with php variable so there you go now let me just put a semicolon here and let me just copy this and here let me just add this php variable so there you go now let me go to my browser let me refresh it let me click on the submit and you can see that the form submitted with the php variable a message has been displayed over here so guys this is how we have to use the php variable with the javascript code i hope you understand this question now let's move on to the next question what is the difference between javascript and php again a popular interview question guys no matter your refresher or experience guy but you can expect this question on your table any time so i request you that be prepared for this question so watch this question and learn and understand how to answer this question to make it simplify what we did we have divided the answers into the points as you can see that with the definition with the syntax and some points over here for both javascript and php now always start with the definition javascript is a client side scripting language whereas php is a server side scripting language so one language works at the browser side and one language works at the server side so if you want to work with the server side functions then use php if you want to do the interactive behavior to the web pages then work on the javascript javascript mainly handles at the browser side only it represented as a front end language and php is represented as a back end language so you can see that if you want to add the interactive behavior to the web pages or if you want to work the things on the browser side then use javascript okay so javascript is mainly focused on the browser side to add the interactive behavior whereas if you want to do the authentication authorization connecting to the database and doing many more things then use php okay guys so this is the definition of the php now how to write the syntax we all know that to write the syntax yes we have to use this script tag you can see that like we did in our previous question starting with the script tag ending with the script tag so this is how you write the javascript code okay and uh, yes you can see that so in case if you want to embed this uh, javascript code inside the html pages then definitely you have to take the help of the script tag okay if you are embedding the javascript code in the php code or html code then definitely you have to use the script tag or else if you are working separately on the javascript file then yes you don't need to use the script tag there you can use the javascript code directly and save that file with the .js extension so you can see that so whatever the .js extension files are there there we don't need to use the script tag if you are working with the php tags then definitely you have to use this tag 
that is question mark php then question mark and then bracket okay so you can see that here no matter you are there in the dot php file but still you have to use this tag php tag or else this php code will not work so for example if i remove this part so definitely this will show an error okay so you have to use this php tag in case if you want to use the php tags so inside this automatically all the php tags gets activated okay so yes so whenever we save that file we have to save with the dot php extension so whenever you use this php tags always save that file with the dot php extension then only it will work so if you save with the dot html or dot js extension then php tags will not work okay here the javascript offers the interactive behavior to the web pages like for example if you want to add a scrolling function of the images yes we can do that with the help of javascript in case if you want to add a image zoom in zoom out function yes you can do that with the javascript functions in case if you want to add some kind of a hover or fade in effect or blur effect yes all this animation we can do that with the help of javascript functions so javascript main focus to add the interactive behavior to the web pages so this is like a brain so if we consider the html as a skeleton and css as a skin then javascript is like a brain to that html pages so if you want to do some kind of a dynamism if you want to add some kind of a behavior to the web pages yes we can use the javascript as a scripting language to add the interactive behavior whereas on the other side php offers completely a server side functionality like if you want to write mysql queries fetch the records from the database save the records to the database do the insert update delete then yes we can use the php scripting language php is purely a complete scripting language which helps to work with the server side functionality so in case if you want to write something to the file or read something from the file save the image to the server or do some kind of a security thing then yes we can take the help of php scripting language okay guys now let's understand the difference between javascript and php with the company's perspective with the framework perspective so there are like many companies which are using the javascript and there are many companies which are using php also so in javascript we have node js framework which runs on javascript runtime environment which is built on google's chrome v8 engine yes so there are many companies which uses this node js like paypal linkedin netflix uber and so on and here in the php you can see that there are many frameworks like laravel like cake php like codeignator right so many uh, companies use this framework and build their websites so for example we have wikipedia facebook tumblr and many more almost like 80% of the websites on an internet runs on php whereas 97% of the websites on an internet runs on javascript so if you are developing a php website or a javascript website you need a javascript compulsory hence 97% of the websites runs on javascript without javascript without html without css we cannot able to develop any website now javascript is like a blood very compulsory to the web pages it is very compulsory for developing apps so now let's talk about some of the famous frameworks available in the javascript that is node js we have we have angular we have react we have many more frameworks available in the javascript with the help of these frameworks yes you can develop the interactive websites very easily similarly we have php frameworks also very popular php frameworks with the help of these frameworks you can create a mvc architecture you can create a proper best practices code you can create proper secure code proper secure website right so all these are very important frameworks like we have laravel like we have kick php we like we have slim and many more okay so guys this is all about the differences between javascript and php so this is how you have to answer this question so this is all about in this question now guys let's move on to the next question 
How to show the PHP errors on the same page? Guys, this is again a very tricky interview question. So now, let's understand how to answer this question. Now guys, now you can see that we are there in our demo1.php, right? So now we have four types of errors that is fatal error, we have notice error, we have parse error, we have warnings. Now. In case if you want to display all these errors on the same page and in case if that error reporting feature is disabled in php.ini file then what you can do you can simply go over here on the top of this file and you can declare the error reporting all yes so you can just say like error reporting e all yes so this will report all the errors happens on the same page. So for example, warning, parse error, notice error, or warning, etc. Now, in case if it is disabled from the php.ini file, as I told you, so what you can do, you can use ini.set, yes, and here you can write display errors, comma, one, yes. So it will display all the errors on the home page. I'm sorry, on the same page. Yes. So this is how you have to display all the errors on the same page. That is the PHP errors on the same page. Now guys, let's talk about displaying the HTML form errors on the same page. Okay. So for example, if you're working with HTML forms and after submit, you want to display the errors on the same page, like a PHP self. Then yes, what you have to do, let's go here. So you can see that we have a form post here where we have the two text boxes here. That is one for the first name and the one for the last name. And when the user clicks on the submit button, if you want to validate whether the user has been entered the first name and the last name or not. So for that, and that is also on the same page. If you want to check the errors of this input text boxes, then what we can do on the top of this form, we can write this code, a post code here, you know, so let me just write it over here. So I will just say PHP and as you can see that, right? So here I'm checking that if the post happens, then please check whether the first name and the last name is set or not. So if it is set, it will check the first name and the last name. And in case if it is empty, the first name and the last name, then it will throw the error message as please enter your first name, please enter your last name. With the help of this action, that is the PHP self action, what happens? The form is going to post on the same page. So we are logging the errors on the same page only. So one demo we have saw where we are displaying all the errors with the help of error reporting method, right? So we're displaying all the errors that is fatal error, warning error, notice error, and so on. And one, we have saw that HTML form errors logging on the same page. Okay, guys. So guys, this is how you have to answer for this question. I hope you understand this question. Now, guys, let's move on to the next question. What is the most used method for hashing the passwords in PHP? Guys, this is again a very important interview question. Now let's understand how to answer this question. In PHP, we have various algorithms for hashing the password. Out of that, Bcrypt offers the robust solution for hashing the passwords. And that is the most common used algorithm in hashing the password. So it is based on the Blowfish block cipher cryptomatic algorithm and it takes the form of an adaptive hash functions. And it is there since 90s and it is very reliable and till now it remains unbreakable. Yes, hence most of the developers rely on the Bcrypt hashing algorithm only and they use Bcrypt in and out in day to day for hashing the passwords. So that is the most reliable and robust solution for hashing the password. So we use Bcrypt as the most used hashing algorithm in PHP. Now, how to apply the Bcrypt algorithm for hashing the password? Let's see a simple demo. So for example, if I have a password like, uh, so guru, 
if I have a password, let's say it's guru and there you go. Let me have a PHP over here. Yes, and and if I use hash here and if I say password hash bcrypt and here I will use array as so this is the default value so there you go now let me just print this echo hash there you go echo now this is how you have to hash the password now in case if you want to verify this password then definitely you can use password verify password verify with the original password hash so if it is successful then we can have echo as password is valid else password is invalid so there you go you can see that now let me just run this code so I will say run so there you go you can see that my hashing has been done over here and the password is valid you can see that okay so if I change something so let's say if I change over here with something something and if I rerun the code so there you go you can see that password is invalid okay so now let me change it to original one and let me rerun the code and here the password is valid okay guys so guys this is how you have to answer this question with the proper demo example okay so now let's move on to the next question what are the different types of arrays available in php so guys this is again a very important interview question so now let's understand how to answer this question so we have three types of arrays in PHP. One is the index arrays. Second one is the associative arrays. And the third one is the multidimensional arrays. These are the three types of arrays available in the PHP. Now, here is the code for index arrays. Okay. So PHP index arrays is an array which represent by an index number. So you can see that index number. And by default, the index number starts from zero. So for example, here it is four. You can have index number starting from zero also because the zero index number is represented Shritik. So that's why we have given index number four to Sana here. So that is zero, one, two, and three. I'm sorry. This is three. Okay. Yes. Now, in order to print this, you can use any loop over here. For example, you can use for loop, you can use for each loop also. So now let me just run this code now and just show you the output. So I will say run the code. So there you go. You can see that Shritik, Karthik, Shri, Sana. Yes. So this is what our index arrays is all about. Now let's talk about associative arrays. Associative arrays are the arrays that use the named keys that you assign to them. For example, you can see that we have assigned the named keys that is Shritik having the value as 2, named key Karthik having the value as 12, named key Shri having the value as 26. And in order to display this array, what we have used, we have used the for each here with the value also. You can see that with the key and the value. Now, this is called as key dollar $s and dollar $s value is the value. So we have displayed the key and value both. So now let me just run this code. And here you can see that. So let me just save it first. I'm sorry. So let me just run it again. So there you go. You can see that Shritik having the value as 2, Karthik 12, Shri 26. Now if you want to display the single key with the value, what you can do, you just say a name with the Shritik, right? with the array name then the key that's it you're done so let me just comment this clear this and let me run it so you can see that having the value as 2 that is Shritik okay 
सो गाइज दिस इज ऑल अबाउट द एसोसिएटिव की नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द मल्टी डायमेंशनल एरेज मल्टी डायमेंशनल एरेज इज नथिंग बट एरेज इन साइड द एरेज राइट सो यू कैन सी दैट वी हैव अरे इन साइड दैट वी हैव अनदर एरे हियर सो वी हैव लाइक वन टू थ्री फोर एरेज इन साइड वन एरे हियर यू कैन सी दैट इन ऑर्डर टू डिस्प्ले आई हैव टेकन द हेल्प ऑफ टू लुप्स हियर वन इज द फॉर लुप एंड अनदर वन इज फॉर इच लुप यू कैन सी दैट सो फर्स्ट आई हैव काउंटेड द नंबर ऑफ एरेज इन साइड द मेन एरे यू कैन सी दैट एंड आफ्टर दैट वंस आई गेट दैट काउंट वॉट आई डेड आई हैव पास दैट एरे नेम विद द द काउंट हियर विद द इट्रेशन काउंट यू कैन सी दैट राइट एंड हैंस आई हैव डिस्प्लेड एवरी थिंग हियर यू कैन सी दैट सो लेट मी जस्ट रा क्लियर दिस एंड लेट मी रन दिस कोड यू कैन सी दैट सो दिस इज आव वी हैव डिस्प्लेड द मल्टी डायमेंशन एरे आउटपुट हियर विद द हेल्प ऑफ फॉर एंड फॉर इच लूप ओके गाइज so this is all about the three types of arrays that is the index arrays that is the multi dimensional arrays and associative arrays in php now guys let's move on to the next question what is the purpose of add the rate sign in php so guys php supports the error control operator that is nothing but your add the rate sign so whenever you use that add the rate sign to any of that variable to any of that uh, method to any of that function then definitely any error message that might be generated by that expression gets ignored so hence we use this add the rate symbol add the rate sign as a error control operator so for example here you can see that right now i don't have any add the rate symbol over here so if i run this code definitely it will throw an error so there you go because this is an array and you can see that undefined variable error here you can see that php notice right so if i use the add the rate symbol over here so this error message will be ignored so there you go let me clear it and let me run this code so there you go there is no error over here so this add the rate symbol is nothing but your error control operator so whatever the error has been generated by the expression it gets ignored here okay so this is all about the add the rate symbol in php now let's move on to the another question what are the different types of variables present in php guys again a very important interview question so guys how to answer it let's understand it there are like eight different types of variables present in php that is starting from the integer float string array boolean class object null variables and resource type so these are the eight different types of variables present in php so as you can see in my code over here i have declared the eight different types of variables present in php so let me start with the number 1 that is the integer so if you see that we have declared the integer variable over here now here in the php we don't need to declare any data type depending on the data which is present on the right hand side automatically variable gets converted so for example you can see that since we have declared a integer value over here this variable automatically gets converted into the integer variable you can see that and remember guys php is a loosely type language it is not a strong type language okay so now as you can see that our first variable is integer and our second variable is float because here we have declared in the point that is 12.32 and this can be also called as double also you call it as float or you call it as double both are the same okay so the second type of variable present in the php is the float and the third one obviously the main one the string type you can see that and the fourth one is the array type because we have declared the array here and the fifth one is the boolean that is true or false and the sixth one is the class object you can see that here we have declared a one simple class and here we have created the object of that class and you can see the object here 
right so this is a object type variable and then we have the null variables because we have declared a null here then we have special type of variable which is not the actual variable but a reference to the resources and the function of the external php that is when we declare uh, anything something like that a database connection or a file open something php automatically creates a new type of variable called resource type variable you can see over here right so these are the eight different types of variables present in the php so whenever you get this question on your table you have to explain all these eight types in this way with a proper example so guys i hope you understand this question now let's move on to the next question how does the for each loop works in php guys again this is a very basic question but a very important interview question for a fresher now let's understand how to answer this question for each loop help us to do the iteration of arrays of each element so guys whenever you are working with the arrays and whenever you want to do a printing of the arrays of each element you have to take the help of for each loop for each loop is the most preferred loop for doing the iteration process of arrays yes we also have the for loop but the most preferred loop for iteration of arrays of each element is the for each loop okay so whenever you are working with this arrays of elements then you have to take the help of for each loop so what it does it depending on the number of elements present in the arrays it does the iteration that many times so for example right now we have the three elements over here so it will do the three times iteration so depending on the number of elements it will do the iteration process that many times so guys this is how the for each loop works in php i hope you understand this question now guys let's move on to the next question what is the use of session start and the session destroy functions in php guys this is very important interview question so i request you that don't miss this question now let's understand how to answer this question session is a way to store the information and make that information available across all the pages until that user closes the website or a web browser so the session information is available across all the pages till the user closes the website or a web browser so the best example for a session would be like uh, e-commerce website where the user is logged into a e-commerce website with his own credential and after a successful login storing that login information into the session variables and this session variables information we can pass to all the web pages including the cart page including the checkout page including the payment page so this is the best ideal example to understand the session so now let's understand the session start function as you can see that this is how we have to declare this session start function in a page so on the top only we have to declare the session start function session start function is used to start a new session or a resume the existing one in that current browser so whenever we use this session underscore start function it will help us to start the new session or help us to resume the existing one but that session is applicable only for the current browser only once we close that browser session automatically get destroys and one more point friends so whenever we want to store a information to the session array global variables so for that also we have to start the session without this function we cannot able to store the information in our session global variables and we store the data to this global session arrays because by using this global session arrays we can store and we can access the information across all the web pages hence it is very essential that we store the information to this global session arrays and uh, we can only able to store the information to this global session arrays once we start the session okay now let's talk about session destroy so in order to declare the session destroy we have to say session underscore destroy that's it open and close semicolon that's it so the session underscore destroy function help us to destroy all the session data present in the current session present in the current browser 
so whatever the information was stored into this session global arrays that all information get destroys once you use this session underscore destroy function okay so session underscore start function help us to store the information into this global session arrays variables where else session underscore destroy function help us to destroy all the data from this global session array variables okay so the best way that you use this session underscore start once the user logs in and store all the information into this variables and once the user logs out you use this session underscore destroy function don't use this session underscore start and session underscore destroy function in the same page okay so this is all about the sessions guys i hope you understand this question now let's move on to the next question what are the different ways of handling the result set of mysqli in php so this is again a very important interview question many developers fails to answer this question now let's understand how to answer this question so that you can able to answer it properly in an interview when we fire the mysql underscore query that is this one yes in php we have like a five ways to handling the result set of mysqli php that is first way is the mysqli underscore fetch underscore row second one is mysqli underscore fetch underscore array then fetch underscore associative then fetch underscore column then fetch underscore object so these are the five ways of handling the result set of mysqli in php so first let's understand about the first way that is the mysqli underscore fetch underscore row so if you want to iterate the rows as per the index arrays then yes you can use this fetch underscore row so it will give you the list of the elements as per the index arrays and you can access the rows with the help of index rows numbers only that is starting from 0 1 2 3 4 like that depending on the columns present in that data table okay so this is like a index rows i can say that when you are using with the fetch underscore row option now let's talk about fetch underscore array option so this is like a array option where you will get the facility of both so here whenever you use this option fetch underscore array option then it will give you the both option that uh, how you want to fetch the results whether you want to fetch the results as an associative array or whether you want to fetch the result as an index arrays so as you can see that whenever we use this option it will give us the option of both you know here we can use the index array option also that is starting from zero or else we can directly declare the column name also of the data table as you can see that so here i have given the option as mysql i both but uh, you can change this option to the mysql i number also so you can see that mysql i number right you can see that okay so either you can use both either you can use associative either you can use number also how you want the output so i want both because this array that is fetch underscore array gives me the two option of both index arrays and associative arrays both but if you are very specific about associative arrays then you can use this option as fetch underscore associative which will throw you the output as associative arrays with the named columns so whatever the column names are present in the data table that column names you can use directly as a result set you can see that okay now the fourth option what you have is the fetch underscore column where you can fetch the particular column you can see that so here you can declare the column number whether you want to fetch the first column second column third column just mention the number of the column and you can fetch the result like this and in case if you want to fetch the result as per the object the class object yes you can do that as you can see that so instead of declaring the array over here we have directly declared the object here you can see that state id then the state name so this state id is nothing but our column name and this state name is nothing but our column name present in our data table so these are the five option from which we can handle the result set 
of MySQLite query. I hope you understand this question. Now let's move on to the next question. What are magic constants in PHP? Guys, this is again a very important interview question. All questions are very important. So I am saying every question is very important in this video. So now let's understand how to answer this question. Magic constants are predefined constants in PHP. Yes, friends. And this constants get changed on the basis of their use. They start with the double underscore. You can see that here and ends with the double underscore as you can see over here. So here we have defined the constant of directory here. So how we defined it? We have to just say underscore underscore and you, you will get the list of the constants. So as you can see that we have the directory constant, we have the file constant, we have the line constant. In case if you want to get the line number, then you can use this constant. In case if you want to get the class name, then you can use this constant. In case if you want to get the current method name, yes, you can use this constant. In case if you want to get the function name, yes, you can use this constant. And in case if you want the namespace, yes, you can use this constant. So we have almost like uh, eight constants available in our PHP. So you can use as per your own requirement. So for example, in case if you want to check the line number of this code, yes, you can use this constant and just you need to run the code. You will get the line number. You can see that in case if you want to get the directory name. Yes, you can get it. Just use this constant and that's it. So there you go. Yes, guys. So this is all about the magic constants available in PHP. Now let's move on to the next question. What are the different types of loops available in the PHP? So we have the four types of loops available in the PHP. That is one is the for loop. Second one is the while loop. Third one is the do while loop and the fourth one is for each loop. So these are the four types of loops available in the PHP. If you want to do the iteration for a fixed number of times, then yes, you can go with the for loop and you can see that here we have defined the fixed number of iteration that is 12 and here we are doing the increment here. You can see that and this is how we have displayed the result over here. Okay, so this is like initializing the variable. This is like a condition for a fixed number of times and this is the incrementing every time the loop gets executed. So this is all about the for loop. And let's talk about the while loop now. If you know the condition properly, if you have the condition properly, then yes, if you want to iterate the code as per the condition, then yes, you can go with the while loop here. As you can see that, right? So this is how we have displayed the code and you can also see that we use the while loop while we are iterating to the MySQL fetch rows. You can see that. So whenever we want to fetch the results of the database or the data table, we use the while loop over here, right? So yes, if you want to do the iteration first and then if you want to check the condition, then yes, you can go with the do while. This is very rarely used, but this is present in the PHP. So yes, we have to consider this loop also. Now let's talk about the fourth and final loop present in the PHP that is for each loop. If you want to loop through the arrays of the collections, like for example, indexed arrays or associative arrays or multidimensional arrays, if you are working with the uh, arrays, then yes, for doing the iteration process of arrays, we have to use for each loop. For each loop mainly used with the arrays only. So whenever you have arrays, any arrays, any array type like index arrays or associative arrays or multidimensional arrays, it is compulsory that you have to use for each loop only. Okay guys, so these are the four types of loops available in the PHP that is for loop, while loop, do while loop and for each loop. I hope you understood this question. So hey guys, this is all about the 20 PHP interview question and answers. And in case if you have any doubts or any queries, please, please, please post your doubts and queries in the below comment section of this video. I will be very, very happy to support and to help you 
in your doubts and queries and if you really like the content of this video then please give us a big thumbs up and do share this video with your colleagues with your friends because your one subscribe and one like really motivate us to create more content like this so thank you very much and happy job hunting